Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we clean up our lead and background vocals using Revoice Pro 4. In a recent video of mine, I went over different ways to line up our vocals using a bunch of different tools, some built right into Studio One, some as an add-on for Studio One, and another that still utilizes ARA technology. That one was Vocaline Pro, and thanks to the guys over at Synchro Arts, we're now getting a chance to take a look at Revoice Pro 4, also using ARA technology. So let's dive into the DIW and clean up these vocals and background vocals. Okay, so here we are inside of the session. This is a song I was working on in a series of live streams. It's something I wanted to put together, and now I'm getting close to being done with the song and being able to mix it and release it. But there's still a fair amount of work that needs to happen. Some of the things that needs to happen is some additional vocal tuning, as well as aligning these vocals. Right now we're looking at chorus three, which is towards the end of the song, and you can see it's a double chorus at the outro because chorus four is over here. My lead vocal is this red track on top, and then I have a stack of background vocal harmonies underneath in this pinkish kind of color. Without getting into Revoice Pro, here's how everything sounds. It's kind of a rough mix, but you'll get an idea of what's going on. Take a listen to the vocals. They're a little bit off here and there, maybe a lot a bit off, I'll admit. And there's also some timing issues, especially right here where I hold this long note. You can see the backgrounds, I didn't hold it nearly as long. So let's just take a listen. So there you go, you can see that there's a big stack of harmony vocals going on, some of them are a bit off here and there, and the timing is loose, we'll say. It's not great. But with Revoice Pro 4, we can actually tighten things up a lot and fix a lot of our tuning issues. So let's go ahead and do that. What you want to do is select your events, and in order to select multiple events, I'm just going to hold down the shift key. and click on everything that I want to put Revoice Pro 4 on. Then we go up to the audio menu and you'll see this button here, edit with Revoice Pro. When you hit this, you'll get this pop-up window and this does a few different things. One, it allows you to just start Revoice Pro, which is a standalone application. But what it also does on all of our events is add an event effect. That one is down here and it's the Revoice Pro link. Now, you might be saying, but there is no link going on. That's because we haven't started Revoice Pro. All we have to do is hit start and it will launch Revoice Pro, which is a standalone application. So there we go, it just changed. You saw the link light turn green and there was this red message underneath that has now changed to ARA2. If I go down to my dock, or if you're on a Windows machine, you can find this as just a separate window that's open on your taskbar. There's Revoice Pro. Revoice Pro has brought over the track names and colors of everything from Studio One. So I can quickly and easily navigate this session just as easily as I did inside Studio One. One thing to note though, when you're in Revoice Pro, all of your faders are gonna be starting at zero. So the output from Revoice Pro might be a bit hotter than what it was in the mix. Just watch if you hit play inside Revoice Pro and your audio device is clipping on the output, just drop your faders. And that's what I've done here. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to tighten up all of these vocals. And considering everything except the top track is a background vocal, I'm going to use the lead vocal as the timing reference for all my backgrounds. Then we'll go into the backgrounds and work on our tunings. So what we need to do is come over here underneath your selected audio, and you can tell it's selected because it's green, there's this bar that says right click here to add a process. This is how Revoice Pro does its work. They call them processes. You get a few options, APT, Doubler, Volume, Warp, and Analyzer. We're gonna go with APT. APT stands for Audio Performance Transfer. When you hit that, you'll get this pop-up box. In this pop-up box, you'll be able to change to any of the other tools that we had, but we're going to stick with APT. 
the selected audio is where Revoice Pro is going to do these processes. If you just had a selection of audio and not everything selected, you would have different options underneath this menu. But I kind of want to do this whole chorus. Then in the purple menu is some of the presets, and this is where I'm going to actually start changing things. I'm just going to go into the factory presets, and I want to do tight timing only. I don't want to mess with the pitch of any of the other tracks because they're harmonies. They're not following the same line. Underneath that is process group, which would be populated over here, but we don't have any groups going on right now, and I don't think we're going to create any this time either. Then underneath you select your guide track. This is what Revoice Pro is going to look at when it's doing the APT processes to the other tracks. This is the guide. Listen to this guy. Then the dub is the tracks in which you're going to affect. Now, here you can only select one at a time, but you can kind of change that. So we'll go with BG Vox 3, and then we're going to leave the output to automatic. What this is going to do is create a new track inside Revoice Pro that is the actual processed audio and a new output. But that new output goes to our old track. You'll see when we get there. Then to do this to all of our backgrounds, we're going to use this dropdown, create multiple processes. I know that I have six backgrounds right here, and it's all going to go to the one lead vocal. So I'm going to change the number of processes to six. Then the dub track increment, this is how it would label the tracks themselves. One, two, three, or two, four, six, et cetera, et cetera. This is how you can change the numbering. Now that we have this selected, we're just going to hit process. When you hit process, the screen's going to change a little, and you may notice on the bottom that this red cogwheel will start spinning. This is letting you know that Revoice Pro is doing its job. And there we go. We're all done. Now what we can do is close this window, and we can take a look. If we scroll down, we can now see a duplicate set of our vocals. And we just have this bottom one selected. That's why we can see this line right here. So very quickly, what I'm going to do is just shift click all of my old background vocals, drag it over to the side here and create a group. And then in this group, I can mute them. Then I'm going to come back down and you'll notice that my faders are all set to what the original track was. So they were all at minus eight and all of the new output tracks are at minus eight as well. Just so we can do a quick A and B, I'm going to put all of these new tracks into a group so we can do a before and after. Once again, here's the original vocals with nothing changed. Take my hand, let's go together, set off forever. So the timing's a little bit off. Let's go to that really long note where clearly I didn't hold it out when I was doing the background vocals. Don't have to be alone in space. So the lead vocal is much longer. This is a perfect spot to do our before and after. Let's mute the originals and go back to our dubs. And now let's listen. Don't have to be alone in space. Every note ends at the same time. This is as if I sang the proper length for each performance. And it did this for the entire chorus because that was the selected audio that I had. Let's go back to the beginning here. And we'll take a listen to this first phrase. Take my hand, let's go together, set off forever. Okay, so clearly there's some tuning issues happening in this first line of the chorus. Let's go ahead and start addressing that. Now, this is the way that I know how to do it. And if you know how to do it a little bit better or a faster way, let me know in the comments below. But I'm going to show you how I learned how to do the tunings in Revoice Pro. So I'm going to start with my top track here. And clicking this button will expand it to the entire window. Then you can see all of the lines are down here. And that's just where they are. I can scroll to kind of put them into the middle of the screen. And you'll notice on the left hand side is a piano roll. For a quick and easy reference, I can actually enter in a scale for those notes on the side. I come down to this menu down here. I go to scales. And I know that this song is in F major. Just going to add that in. And now it's altered the piano roll to only show the notes that are in F major. 
Now that we have our reference, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit O on my keyboard, which will give me my selector tool. Then, to make things really easy, and these are background vocals, so we kind of can right now, I'm just going to hit Command A, or that'll be Control A on a PC. Now that I have everything selected, I'm going to hit K on my keyboard, and this brings up the pitch tool. Because these are backgrounds, I can bring it a little bit tighter. So I'll go up here closer to 80%. Instead of showing you how I would do this for all of the other ones, I'm just going to do that real quick, and I'll see you in a couple of seconds. OK, so I went ahead and did it for all of the other background tracks. Now let's take a listen. Take my hand, let's go together, set off forever. There's still a couple notes right in this middle section, so what we can do is try and find them. I found the culprit. It's this background vocal track three right here. And it seems like this note doesn't want to be who he wants. So what I can do is come over to it, hear the great sound of tuning, and put it into a closer position of being in tune. Now let's take a listen. A forever. A forever. It was actually flat, so I brought it up. What I'm going to do is compare it to the other side, and I know that track four is supposed to be the same note. Forever. Cool. But these are mono, and they're coming right up the middle, but I don't want that because it's going to compete with my lead vocal. Inside Revoice Pro, you can pan, and that's what these numbers are down here. And so I am able to put this to the far left and right. Now if we listen. Forever. Cool. Let's do that for the rest of the tracks. OK, now that we've cleaned up a little bit of our tuning, let's take another listen. Take my hand, let's go together, set off forever. OK, so as I was listening through, I heard that there are some discrepancies in timing in the high harmony that I was doing. That's the tracks 7 and 8 down here. You can hear it right in the second half of the line here. Take a listen. Take my hand, let's go together, set off forever. This is just a performance thing that happened where I was very articulate in one and kind of slurred through the other one. So let's see if we can clean this up a little. I kind of want to stick with the tight sound because I know all of my other backgrounds have that. So this is background seven. So while I'm in background seven, I know that it's this note right here. I know the note sounds right, but I just want to adjust my timing a little. Try and make it a little tighter. So what I can do with it selected is if I hover around the top corners, I can actually change the length of the note. So I can add a little gap in here and just fix my tuning to try and make it just a touch more articulate. Let's take a listen. Take my hand, let's go together, set off forever. Now, in solo, yes, you can hear that there's now an audible gap, but Revoice Pro has made it smooth so that it's not harsh or has any clicks or pops. And once we're actually in our full mix, I'm pretty sure this is going to be unnoticeable. Let's just take a listen to all of our vocals together now. Take my hand, let's go together, set off forever. Now let me show you another great thing about ARA. What I can do is just switch right back over to Studio One. Everything here looks like it hasn't changed. If we look at this note here and our background vocals, it looks like nothing happened. But when we hit play, Everything that we did inside Revoice Pro carried over because of ARA technology. Listen to it again. We're inside Studio One now, and I'm just going to solo everything out. Take my hand, let's go together, set off forever. Don't have to be alone in space. Now we're hearing the one thing that we didn't touch on, which was the tuning of the lead vocal. And I'll do that without you guys having to watch. 
Revoice Pro has way more features than I can cover in a short video, including being able to create a double from just a single recording. If you wanna see more about some of the things that Revoice Pro 4 can do, let me know in the comments below. But I can tell you that this is an immensely powerful tool. Being able to take all of my backgrounds and have them in time with my lead vocal in just a couple clicks, this is gonna save so much time when you're working on a lot of different tracks and need to be able to do these edits nice and fast. Make sure to head over to SynchroArts.com and check out Revoice Pro 4 and use it inside your version of Studio One or in your DAW of choice. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit TimFlansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.